Today on The Quick Slant, we're going to talk about several things that blow my mind about Jordy Nelson. So stay with us. I came across a stat about Jordy Nelson about a month ago that really got me thinking. Um, the stat was that in the course of time since, since 2011 to, to present, Jordy is the second leading touchdown receiver in the NFL. That in itself didn't shock me a whole lot because we all know how valuable Jordy is as a, as a player and, and how outstanding he is at catching the ball. What really astounded me was uh, th three things as I dug deeper. First of all, of course, the fact that Jordy is the second leading touchdown receiver in the, in the league. He's just beneath De Des Bryant, and Des has 61 touchdowns. Jordy has 57, just four shy of the lead. And that is in light of the fact that Jordy missed an entire season in 2015 with a knee injury. That was the stat that was introduced to me, and I thought, I, you know, I'd never... I'd never really given any thought to that, how, how amazing that is. But as I dug deeper, here's a couple other things that I found that blew my mind even more so about Jordy's uh, ranking as far as touchdown, receiving touchdowns go. First off, Jordy has been sharing in many, in many seasons, has been sharing the touchdown load in grand fashion. For instance, in, in 2012, in addition to Jordy's touchdowns, James Jones had 14 and led the league in touchdowns that year. Randall Cobb had eight that year. So Jordy split between two Packer receivers that did very, very well that year. In 2014, Randall Cobb had 12 to Jordy's 13. And then again in 2016, Devontae Adams had, uh, had 12 touchdowns to Jordy's to Jordy's 14. So Jordy's been splitting time or splitting touchdowns with other players this whole time, which is uh, amazing. It, you know, how, how do you get 14 touchdowns when one of your teammates has 12? Most teams, that just doesn't happen. If one of the team, if one of the players has 14 touchdowns, everybody else is kind of, has, they pretty much monopolized catching the ball in the end zone and everybody else has very few. Uh, the other thing that um, really amazed me was Jordy really didn't become a, the starter until the 2011 season, and that's you know that's a time frame we're looking at. He, in and that kind of came off his Super Bowl uh, his Super Bowl showing where he had what nine nine touch or nine receiving uh, nine receptions for 140 yards I think, and of course the one touchdown that kind of got the ball rolling for the Packers. Um, but when he came off that Super Bowl and, and actually began to start for the Packers in the 2011 season, he didn't start every game that year. In fact, he only started nine of them, which is a little more than half a season. But in those nine games, he scored 15 touchdowns. That was the one that blew my mind most of all. So I, I think... You know, I think we all know how big an asset Jordy is to this team, how much we love to watch him play, but, you know, when you dig into some of this stuff, it just, it flat astounds you what the man can do. And, and not just that, he's got so many years still to go. He, he could take Donald Driver's uh, position as the leading receiver in Packer history um, and... I would love to see it. So I want to hear what you guys think about it, and I'll talk to you later.